our next topic in electronics is sensors, specifically looking at temperature sensors. Now sensors in general are devices that convert something that you want to measure, like temperature, into something that you can measure, like resistance. Uh, typically the output of sensor is resistance, although it can be voltage, current, capacitance, various devices, or various outputs like that. Uh, resistance is typically an output though because it takes no energy to form a resistance. Likewise, I don't need any batteries if I have a sensor where the output is resistance. Um, for example, a couple sensors where the output is resistance would be a thermistor. That's a sensor where the resistance changes with temperature. A cadmium sulfide light sensor, there the resistance changes with light levels. Or a gas sensor, where the gas changes the resistivity of the material. If you can measure resistance, then you can measure just about anything. As an example, if you go to DigiKey, uh, the toy store for electrical engineers, DigiKey has about 19,000 different sensors in stock. Um, they vary from color, current, encoder, flow, pores, gas, humidity, temperature, magnetic field, so on and so on. Most of these are resistance outputs. So again, as I mentioned before, if I can measure resistance, I can measure just about anything. To give us something concrete to look at, let's look at temperature. Temperature is difficult to measure directly. However, resistance is easy to measure. So if I have a temperature sensor, that, which is a device where the resistance varies the temperature, I can then measure temperature. Uh, two specific ones we're going to look at here would be a resistive temperature device, RTD, or a thermistor. Um, there are other temperature sensors. We're just going to look at these two. Starting out, a resistive temperature device, or RTD, RTDs are made on metal. At zero degrees Kelvin, the resistance is very, very low because the electrons traveling are, are traveling unhindered in the conduction bands. As temperatures increase, the atoms start moving around, impeding the flow of the electrons. Hence, the resistance goes up with temperature. The symbol for an RTD is a variable resistor with a plus T. That means the resistance goes up as temperature goes up. To model a thermistor, usually we use a polynomial model. The more terms you add, the more accurate it is. A first order model just uses a constant and something proportional to temperature. The constant depends upon the metal. If you are using beryllium, that's the metal that's the most sensitive to temperature changes. Neodymium is the least sensitive and typically we use copper. Copper, the resistance changes by 0.43% per degree C. Uh, for example, we have a copper RTD uh, where the resistance is 10K at 5 degrees Celsius. If I increase the temperature to 25C, the resistance increases from 10,000 ohms to 10,800. So likewise, anytime I have metal, the resistance does change the temperature. A uh, second example. Let's design a circuit to use a copper RTD, and I want the output of the circuit to go from minus 10 volts at minus 20 C to plus 10 volts at plus 20 C. And let's assume we're using a copper RTD. The first step is find the resistance versus temperature. If I plug in temperature going from minus 20 to plus 20 in this equation, the resistance varies from about 915 to 1180. Next, I want to convert resistance to voltage. One way to do that is use a voltage divider. This 1K resistor is fairly arbitrary. It tends to work best if the 1K is close to R, nominal value of R. Um, if I do choose a 1K resistor, then the voltage here at X is going to vary from 4.775 volts to 5.2 volts as the temperature changes from minus 20 to plus 20 C. At those two points, I want the output to go from minus 10 to plus 10. This is an instrumentation amplifier, something we talked about in our last lecture. In this case, I want the output to go up as the input goes up, so I connect the plus input. The gain is output over input. The output changes by 20 volts, as the input changes by 0.5 for gain of 46. So pick these resistors to be 46 to 1. And the offset. At mid-band, I want the output to be 0. At mid-band, the average of the two endpoints is 4.991 volts. That's my offset. And as a side light, this is a little bit wrong. This is a 1K resistor anomaly in parallel with this 474K to ground. 
The Sport 74K does change the voltage, does change the resistance, does change the output. The reason they made these large is because I don't want this to change the voltage to X. If I make these large, it does change it, but not too much. In MATLAB, I can check my answers. As temperature goes from minus 20 to plus 20 C, I find the, re the resistance. I can find the voltage at, at X. This is ignoring the loading of the 464K resistors. Uh, the instrumentation amplifier has a gain of 46.42. There's my offset. If I plot this, this is the output versus temperature. Notice I'm going from minus 10 degrees C, minus 10 volts, to plus 10 volts as temperature goes minus 20 to plus 20. That meets my requirements. Also note that at zero, the midband, I'm not quite at zero. The reason for that is the nonlinearity of the voltage divider. A second type of sensor is a thermistor. Thermistors are made out of semiconductors as opposed to metals. There's two types of thermistors, the NTC's negative temperature coefficient and PTC, positive temperature coefficient. These are nonlinear uh, devices. And they have two different uses. The PTC thermistors are your resettable fuses. As the current goes up, I get self-heating. As these get hotter, the resistance goes up even further, and you get this runaway effect. Eventually, the resistance goes to infinity, stopping the current flow. As you turn off the device and let it cool down, the resistance will come back down to the nominal, nominal range. If you ever have a device where when you use it, if it uh, starts getting too hot, it turns itself off, wait half an hour, turns itself back on again, that's a resettable fuse, a positive temperature coefficient thermistor. The one we'll be using to measure temperature is a negative temperature coefficient thermistor. The model for a thermistor depends upon how accurate you want it to be. It's exponential in nature, and the temperature is in absolute or in Kelvin. Um, we've got the two-term, three-term, four-term parameters. Uh, we'll be using the two-term parameter. If you go to the data sheets, there will be a B term. The B term is this number right here, 3905. That tells you how to model the thermistor. Um, for example, suppose I choose a thermistor where your B term is 3905. It's nominally 1000 ohms at 25 degrees Celsius. Design a circuit to go from minus 10 to plus 10 volts from minus 20 to plus 20 C, just like we did before. Uh, the first step is to model the thermistor. This would be the two-term model for a thermistor. At 25 Celsius, which is 298 Kelvin, this is zero. E to the zero is one, I'm at one kilo ohm. As temperature goes up, the resistance drops. So this is what the resistance looks like versus temperature. Uh, two things to note. Here the resistance changes much more drastically than it does with an RTD. That's good. Uh, the bad part is it's nonlinear. There is a definite bend to this curve. The design for the Instrumentation amplifier to amplify this is almost the same as we did before. First, choose a voltage divider. I want to convert resistance to voltage. It tends to work best if I choose this resistance to be the geometric mean of the two endpoints. Uh, the two endpoints are 1 kilo ohm and 10 kilo ohms. Take the product of the two and square root, you get about 3 kilo ohms, so that's what I'm choosing for R. It's really arbitrary, but that tends to work best. Uh, now with the two endpoints, find the voltage goes from 7.7 .7 to 2.9 volts. For the plus minus input, as the voltage at x goes down, the output goes up. That's a negative correlation. So x goes to the minus input. The gain I want is change in output over change in input. I want a gain of 4.1, get much less than what we had before with the RTDs. That's an advantage of a thermistor. I need lower gains. Here I have a gain of 4.1. And the offset. Again, I want the output to be zero at mid-band. The middle voltage is 5.3 volts. That'll be my offset. If you do that and throw it in MATLAB, I have temperature going from minus 20 to plus 20 C. Here's resistance versus temperature. Here's my voltage divider. There's my instrumentation amplifier. Now plot the output of the instrumentation amplifier, and it goes from minus 10 to plus 10. And again, kind of note this is not a straight line. There's kind of a wiggle to it. That has the nonlinearity of the um, thermistor plus the nonlinearity of the voltage divider put together. The problem with thermistors is they're nonlinear. There's a thing called a linearizing circuit. That's this guy right here. 
By choosing RA and RB, I can make the resistance more linear. Essentially what I want to do, if I want to go from minus 20 to plus 20C, I'll choose RA and RB so that at midband, at 0 degrees C, the voltage at midband is halfway between the two endpoints. Makes the resistance more linear, uh, which also makes the voltage divider and the instrumentation amplifier more linear. The trick is how to find those two points. The constraint is the resistance varies with temperature by the thermistor equation. I want to make the impedance at 10 degrees C the average of the two endpoints. Find RA and RB. Um, there's mul multiple solutions. Here I just use F in search. I'm going to guess the 1,000 ohms, and it tells me what RA should be. It should be 504 ohms. So assuming RB is 1,000, there's RA. And here's my MATLAB code that I use to optimize. I'm going to guess RA, find the impedance at zero, the error is the difference between the midpoint and the average of the two endpoints, return the error squared, try to make J as small as possible, and that gives you 504 ohms. Uh, what you're left with then is if I take that linearizing circuit, here's the impedance of it, going from minus 20 to plus 20C, this is much more linear than what we had before. What that does for you is I now have more linear resistance, so I have more linear output, Disadvantage, however, is that I have a smaller change in resistance, so I'm going to need a higher gain. That kind of wraps up using or trying to measure temperature. Temperature is extremely easy to measure, so likewise, if I have a device that can measure anything, temperature is usually one of the options. It's just so easy.